Good. All right, everybody. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, welcome everybody to the Edson Webinar CX Talk series. Yeah, okay. So to continue our exciting talk, uh, as we've been doing uh, since the pandemic, actually before that, we've been doing webinars also. So in the series of webinars that we're going through, we're talking about customer experience, we're talking about the contact centers, we're talking about the outsourcing space. Yeah, essentially anything and everything uh, that is relevant to the respective industries in terms of customer experience, in terms of contact centers, all right? So that is our core focus area. Now, uh, in addition to doing all this, uh, the, the doing these webinars, okay, we also take feedback from everybody all right, uh, in terms of what kind of webinars are there you'll be interested to see or hear moving into the future. And so this is part of that series and we're moving forward here. Uh, if you had seen, uh, we have a series of also planned of other topics that is going to run through the end of the year. Yeah? Okay, in terms of uh, the uh, the omni-channel contact center, you know, uh, omni agents, you know, what are some of the skills that's required, right? Well, what's in store for the future of customer experience and also contact centers and also services as a whole. Right? The previous uh, the previous webinar we did. Yeah, uh, was on WhatsApp and how you can leverage on WhatsApp, you know, to extend your business and grow your business. And of course, this webinar, okay, we're going to be talking about right, outsourcing telemarketing for maximum returns. Yeah, okay. And of course, we're going to be looking at the strategy, the pros and the cons. Now, now, now we're going to come from a few perspectives. Yeah? I'll go into the brief of this later. Uh, but I would like to say uh, uh, really, uh, really honored yeah, to have uh, a great guest with us. Uh, okay? And uh, uh, we have uh, in two individuals from Envo BPO. And of course, Envo BPO is one of the leading outsourcers right, uh, in Malaysia. Uh, having started businesses, uh, having started the operations in 2009, right, uh, to, serve, uh, to serve other businesses to help them grow to help them grow the revenue and also their business. Uh, we have with us, all right, everybody in your respective areas, uh, you can give a big, give big round of applause for Mr. Jeremy Lim, the Director of Envo BPO. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, hi. Happy afternoon or evening to everyone here. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. All right, okay. And uh, of course, uh, with uh, in addition to having Jeremy, we also have uh, the... Uh, Assistant General Manager uh, for Envo BPO, okay, Miss Aishan. Hi, Aishan. Hello. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Okay, so we've got two wonderful illustrious guests here. Okay, uh, and they will be walking us through uh, the topic to share their thoughts and also to share uh, what they what what are some of the things that we can do in terms of telemarketing and enhancing yeah and getting the max out of your telemarketing operations. All right. Of course, they will be they will be sharing also what are the potential uh, possibilities of also outsourcing your claim All right. So my name is Ken Ken Ng. Okay, without having I can't can't forget to introduce myself, right? Okay, and uh, I am the CEO and also the senior managing consultant for Accents in Europe, you know, or the Accent Education Group. Right? So uh, I am the host today, all right, and be walking through uh, the questions or uh, the topic of outsourcing telemarketing for maximum returns. Ready? Okay, so uh, let's just start off with a quick introduction, and I'm just going to hand it over to Jeremy for him to introduce himself. And I uh, do do share a little bit about Envo, yeah, Jeremy. Okay, go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, sure. Thank you, everybody. You know, for uh, being here in this beautiful evening, and also, of course, thanks to Ken and uh, the Aston team for organizing this webinar. So I hope this whole session will benefit the participants over here who wants to know more about BPO. Uh, which stands for business process outsourcing for those who do not know. And of course, also to focus a lot on the telemarketing industry. So for myself, uh, I'm Jeremy. I'm the director of NWO. I'm also a lawyer by profession, focusing a lot on uh, cor corporate matters such as merger acquisitions, capital markets. And uh, I've taken over this second generation business for the past five years. Uh, and NWO has been around for close to 12 years. I've actually grew the company for the past five years from 30 headcount to more than 300 staff now. So we have like three different offices in different location, serving more than 30 different clients, uh, ranging from startups, uh, listed companies, GLCs, MNCs, even government bodies from all around the world, including countries such as uh, the US, the UK, China, Russia, Bulgaria, just to name a few. So just a quick introduction about this. Um, I'm not so sure if uh, if you're okay. I can share maybe two slides about uh, Envo. Sure, not an issue at all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Just a little note for everyone. Yeah, if you're not familiar to Zoom, I know everybody. You know, could be on Zoom. You could be on Teams, Microsoft Teams. You could be on Google Meets, right? 
Uh, so you on the top right, you will see a view button, all right? And you can change your view, yeah, to suit the your view that suits you the best, the most comfortable way. All right, okay, go ahead, Jeremy. I believe you have sharing option here. Um, hold on for a while. Okay, Are you you need to move your mouse to the slide and then kind of click or scroll down. There we go. Yep. Yeah, so a little bit about um, us, about NWO. So these are the core businesses that we are focusing on, uh, ranging from telemarketing, lead generation. These are the two topics that we are focusing uh, on this webinar today. We also provide multilingual omni-channel support, uh, customer survey as well, and includes customer service, help desk, and technical support. So we are probably backed by more than 10 years of experience. As a matter of fact, we are in this industry for more than 12 years now, so we have various methodology, tried and tested methodology, working with clients of all angle. And we're also proud to say that we have four major certifications ranging from the MSc status. So we also have this uh, ISO, ISO certified. And uh, of course, we are also certified by the Ministry of Finance and we are also accredited by MAGIC as well. So the, the five major awards that we have won recently, the one, the most recent one would be the SME 100 award. So we are very blessed you know, with uh, all the support of our teams and our client. And uh, we are also accredited as the one of the top 10 most promising BPO in the industry. So just a quick facts huh, uh, for the GBS industry or maybe the BPO industry. So business process outsourcing industry is a growing industry. As you can see, it's valued at 232 billion USD in 2020. And that was just pretty recent. And it's expected to have a compound annual growth rate of 8.5% from year to year. So by 2028, most likely the BBO industry should be reaching at least 411 billion USD. So this is to show how big the industry is. And also, of course, uh, in terms of contacting with customers. So we do have uh, a, a, a static, statistics that we got from this uh, one niche online, where it shows that most of the people would still prefer contact wire calls. So I understand that uh, some of you might be using social media also, but contrary, contrary to the popular belief, so 51% still prefer using voice call and 18% through email, 10% wire chat. So in terms of customer retention, so when a customer have this problem, so the, the first way to solve it would most likely be in way of calling. So that is a very important factor why we will need to resolve the, the inquiry from the first stage itself so that it will not go over to our, our competitor. So in, in short, this statistic shows that it's uh, important to also maintain even telemarketing and also voice, voice support, especially more so in this industry and during this pandemic. Okay, over thanks, to you, thanks. Ken. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that, Jeremy. All right, yeah, you kind of, I would, you kind of took the stole my thunder a bit. I was going to ask you about the industry, but never mind. Thanks. <laughs> I guess it builds into it, lah. Right? Okay. Sounds like, uh, sounds like Envo is doing pretty well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And of course, we also have the Assistant General Manager for Envo BPO. Uh, we have Aishan. Aishan, you want to do a quick intro? Yeah, uh, a little bit quick intro about myself, uh, and also a little bit history about myself, lah. So I'm currently Assistant General Manager of Envo BPO right now. So I'm currently managing both operations, inbound and outbound telemarketing uh, campaign for the past five years. Uh, for information, myself graduated in degree Bachelor of Science majoring in uh, biochemistry. So for your information, I was uh, looking for a job after graduation, uh, graduated. And I started to work as a telemarketer after being introduced by my friends. And I initially thought that working for three months temporary while waiting for my job application in biochemistry industry. So honestly speaking, when I started first month in telemarketing, I felt like quitting my job, honestly speaking. <laughs> so one whole month working as a telemarketer without sales right, seriously torturing me on that particular month, right? <laughs> so before I deciding to quit, um, I met one of my mentors, which is very, very inspiring. He just told me one of a sentence, which, you know, uh, I, I still remember until now, which is what doesn't kill you will only make you stronger. So she told me that um, don't quit before you're achieving something. 
So I still remember how I got my first sales, you know, uh, during the first uh, birthday rally, if everyone still remember. Everyone's supposed to stay at home, you know, we're afraid of the riots. So I decided to go into office all by myself. And I promised myself, I said, before I quit, you know, I have to get one sales on that day itself. So I still remember the content of the call where a customer asked me if I'm still working in the office now. And I say, yes. <laughs> and I asked him if I have, uh, I can have a couple of few minutes from him uh, to present myself on the product. Uh, there is no obligation to buy anything from me. You know, if anything is not right, you just comment. So I recall the first sales from this customer who so happened to be a lawyer. And he asked me so many questions. But thankfully, I was able to answer during that time. And that's the first sales that gave me an encouragement to continue my journey in telemarketing. So I get promoted to become a manager, uh, thereafter to manage 10 different outsourced call centers. And as they say, the rest is just history, like I was saying. <laughs> you know? So I have been since in the industry for more than 10 years now, and I'm looking forward to have money, many more years with Envo. Right. So have a look back. Wow. Wow. Many more years with Envo. That sounds very politically correct. Jeremy, I'm sure you're happy to hear that, right? Yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, with the audience here, who some of them might be our clients, we should yeah, be there able we go. to work with you in the long run. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I know uh, when I said you were sharing that story, right? It uh, really rings a bell with me. Uh, in the late 80s, I was also doing outbound telemarketing, right? except I was doing it in the US, you know. And uh, one of the things that stood, stayed with me was, yeah, number one, how hard to close, right? Uh, especially with a Malaysian guy, you know, speaking in a Malaysian accent, right? Trying to call American people, uh, trying to convince them to buy insurance. Yeah? So it was difficult for me also. But uh, I remember one thing which really, really stuck to me, it stuck in my mind. Uh, back in the day, right, back in the late 80s, uh, when we went to work right, for, uh, for being a telemarketer, we would come to the entrance, okay, and they would issue us with uh, the database to call. They would issue us a sheet to fill out the forms. Yeah, the time, no computers. Everybody was on clipboard and a piece of paper. Right? And on top of all of that, yeah, we get a pen and an ashtray. All right. So back then, right, uh, everybody was making calls, phone in one hand, cigarette in another. Okay, and uh, you would you only take a break. Yeah, you want fresh air, you go outside. No, not like today. You know, today you want cigarette, you go outside. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I know what it's like. I know what it's like. Yeah? Okay. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Thank you for sharing that. I I think perfect person uh, to come in to share on the challenges on the human capital side. Yeah. Okay. And also how to motivate these individuals uh, on or more on the operational side. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Very good balance. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, having said that, having said that, all right, uh, let me just uh, just remind everyone, if you have any questions, kindly put it into the chat. Yeah, we'll be happy to catch it over there and then be able to answer it. Now, before we go into our topic and framing of what we want to discuss, uh, I'd like to get a feel of the audience as to uh, what, uh, where, who are you, who you are and where you are right now from the perspective of telemarketing. Yeah? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a poll. Okay, I'm going to run a poll. All right, so... Uh, everybody that is uh, at your, everybody that is uh, standing by, all right. Uh, I'm going to run a poll, okay, and I would like for you to answer the poll. The three simple questions, okay. Once it appears, you'll be able to click on the answer. All right. Okay. So I've launched the poll. Yeah, kindly answer the poll so we get a fine idea of uh, where you're coming from yeah, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of attending this webinar. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, going well. We have about 10 people who've answered. If we can get the rest of you, it would be fantastic. I know what you're thinking. Some of you are thinking, is this when we get the vouchers? Uh, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm sure uh, you are here for the long-term and larger picture, the bigger picture of uh, organizational revenue, right now, which is going to reflect a lot more. Yeah? All right. So I'm glad you're here. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. We have 29 people that have already answered the poll. All right, so we got a few more that would be great. Yeah, uh, once we hit about 50 or 60 percent, yeah, then I'll go ahead and close the poll. All right. Okay, anybody else? Wow, wow, okay, interesting, interesting feedback. All right, interesting. Okay, uh, 
Terima seconds. Yeah, thirty more seconds. Anybody else who want to just go ahead and answer this very quickly? Three simple questions. No, I'm pretty surprised that a lot of a lot of them have not like, used telemarketing services before. Mm, mm. That's why it's the perfect platform for them to be able to get information and get knowledge on how to set it up and then work on that. I think that's a good area to be talking more of. Huh? Yeah. Yep. Okay. By the way, how you respond is really how we're going to angle the, the webinar yep. to make the most of this session for you. We don't want to waste your time, right? Uh, and we want to make it as fruitful as possible for all the audience and for you giving up your time here. Right? So uh, we want to make it as fruitful as possible, essentially. Let's see what else we have here. All right. Okay. Uh, we have about 40, about 49%. Can we get one more percent? One more percent. Come on. I got 49% answered the poll already. Let's make it 50% at least. Anyone, anyone? One more person? Answer the poll, answer the poll. One more person. Anyone, anyone? Okay. Mm -hmm. Calling once, calling right. twice. So done. Okay, let's not waste any more time. I'm going to end the poll here, yeah? So if you're about to click now, sorry. Okay, too late. Okay, all right. Now, uh, let me just share the results so everybody can see uh, what we are seeing. Okay, so uh, this is the results that appear. You should see the results there. Yeah, if you can see the, can everybody see the results? If you can, uh, just go to chat and just type one. Yeah, just type one if you can see the results. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, so everybody can see that. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. All right, so you can scroll and look at the look at the results there. Yeah. Okay, so Jeremy, it looks like uh, we've got some about. About 17% have, uh, have are, are currently using telemarketing. Okay, 71% uh, are not. Wow. Okay. All right. And uh, 12, another 12% are planning to. So I think by the end of this talk, yeah, that 70% that is uh, that is not using uh, will probably move over to planning to. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, because uh, once they see how lucrative it can be and how much it can help the business, you know, right? Uh, I'm currently using outsourcing my telemarketing services. Uh, this yes, 10%. All right. Okay. And then. Uh, and uh, and let me see. Uh, no, yeah, seventy-one percent. Did I just repeat the question? Is this question repeated? So it looks like it. Huh? Okay, I apologize on that. All right, but let's see. The third one. I would like to see my revenue increase in the next six months. You know, okay. Some are uh, fourteen percent are saying ten percent. See the revenue go up by ten percent. Okay, that's highly probable. All right, uh, forty percent are saying thirty percent. Wow. Okay. And 26%, now these are the killers. These are the people I want to talk to, right? They want to go and see their sales go up 50% and higher, right? And then we have the realists. We have the realists, okay? I don't expect the void to go up till 2022, yeah? Uh, yeah, I understand, understand where you're coming from, right? Okay. And um, th thank you everybody for answering the poll. Uh, and that really last item really leads us into this topic as to why we want to talk about it, all right? Now, thank you everyone. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing the results. Okay. Now, 20% of you say that uh, you don't expect the sales to go up, you know, till maybe after 2022. Everybody is waiting for things to go back to normal, right? The fact of the matter is everybody knows there is no normal. This is the normal normal, yeah? What they call the new normal, guys, it's going to be the normal normal, right? This is going to be it, right? So, um, given the situation they are in, we are in, We've had about a year and a half, almost two years now, okay, to readjust and pivot. Everybody's talking about pivoting. You know, everybody's talking about how to readjust their business. But what doesn't change is the loss of revenue. Yeah? Okay, a lot of businesses have closed. For those who are still in working or still in business, kudos, congratulations. Yeah, you have done very well. You have weathered the storm, right? But has the storm gone by or is it blowing away? I would like to say that it's not going to blow away, but we need to live, learn how to survive in the storm. Right? Shen, what was that quote again? Uh, what was that quote from your mentor? If something doesn't kill you, it will make you stronger. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so this storm will really make us stronger. Now, what we want to do is to add ammunition to what you can do. Right? And that brings us to the topic you know, okay, of outsourcing telemarketing okay, for maximum results. And so um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the difficult times that we're facing right now. Okay? And how we need to acknowledge that you know the, the way of chase sales, the way of getting revenue has changed. Has changed without the face to face, without the meetings, without the conferences, without the corporate presentations. What else can you do? What can you do to make up for that revenue? 
Yeah, because why your OPEX doesn't change, your operation expense doesn't change, right? your, your 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 expenses still run, yeah, like it or not. So we have to find ways to pull in that revenue. And so one of the natural options that we're talking about, of course, focus today. I mean, there are a lot of options we can look at, right? Uh, Jeremy already mentioned social media. That's one option that we can do. A lot of the social media apps are turning into uh, one stop, one stop where you can actually close an entire transaction within the app itself. Okay. However, what is most impactful and most powerful, as I have seen uh, during this environment, is telemarketing. All right, and that's why I believe you are here. Yeah. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to explore telemarketing as an option yeah, to increase our revenue. All right? Now, first of all, first of all, is if you are we don't have an operations yet, which I saw seventy one percent don't yet. All right. Uh, are you planning to? Uh, how do you set up one? How do you set up one? Now, I think, first of all, we need to understand the foundation. Is it worth the time? Is it worth the money? You know, what kind of returns will I get? You know, I mean, those all those questions are floating in the air. Right? Because why? Once you jump in and set up, right, uh, what is involved? Okay, now, so this is where uh, we will also answer the question and help you, uh, help you kind of navigate through. If you are setting up your own operations, how would you do it? Okay, vice versa. If you are to want to, you are thinking of outsourcing your operations, okay, so... How would you go about that? All right. So those are the things we're looking at. Uh, in the middle of all that, we'll talk about the people factor. We'll talk about the operations. We'll talk about strategy. Okay. So if anybody has any questions, again, yeah, if anything that is not being discussed or in what, when we are talking about a certain topic or certain area, if you do have questions, do type into the chat. Yeah, we'll be glad to take your questions. All right. So that kind of frames where we are now. The kind of frames where we are now. And we want to make the most of this hour and a half that we have. Okay. Uh, with uh, only with only about half, we're only really about one hour left here to to get the most out of this. Okay? So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump straight to Jeremy and uh, let's get some thoughts from Jeremy. Okay, so Jeremy, let's get the let's let the let's get start the ball rolling. All right. Uh, we talk about the pandemic. We talk about how tough it's been. Okay. So uh, how has it been for Envo so far? How how have you how how has the pandemic affected you guys? You know where are you right now? You know how how's it going right now? So, okay, in terms of uh, like, like how you pointed it cor correctly, it's now the normal. It's no longer the new normal, old normal, but it's just normal. So as a matter of fact, this uh, normal has allowed us to look beyond conventional ways of operating uh, a PPO or a contact center. So we are pretty blessed that we have our uh, IT team who is able to set up the infrastructure for our team to be able to work from home within 48 hours. And of course, it was a challenge in the beginning, more so as we need to prove to our clients that work from home actually works. So a lot of our clients, they will see, uh, are you sure uh, that you can work from home? How are we going to you know, monitor the staff? How are we going to hit the KPI? But throughout the whole and a half years, uh, we are able to maintain the service level and at the same time, getting most of our team to be able to work from home. And also, you know, in terms of uh, the clients, of course, there's also not so good news. So we work with a lot of uh, clients from the travel industry, from the retail, beauty salons, even the wellness center. So a lot of them are affected. So it is similar to a domino effect. When our clients are affected, since we are actually the extension of our client's marketing arm, we will inevitably be affected as well. So what we, what, what we have done is to diversify, to reach out to international clients. So we look outside of Malaysia, so thanks to Zoom, Google Meet, Teams, we are now able to close you know, some of the international clients over a video call. So uh, I, I recall we had a discussion with one of the clients from Poland. So all the way from Poland, we have not thought about even talking to someone from that far. So they reached out to us and say, uh, are you able to show a video of your office and also some pictures? So what we did uh, is to get one of our team members to go around the office and use a video and show it live. So with that, then we can explain, no, this is our call center, this is what we do, this is our SOP. So this instill confidence with our client internationally. And of course, you know, give the client uh, the type of credentials and capabilities of what we can do. Uh, I, I, I believe the upside of the pandemic is for us to be able to go get closer to our international clients more than before, not to mention, of course, our Malaysian clients, uh, if, even though they're based in Johor, Penang, Sabah, Sarawak, it doesn't matter. We are just a video call away. So in short, there's no boundaries in whatever, uh, whatsoever in reaching out to anyone out there to try to uh, get whatever sales required. 
that's brilliant, that's brilliant. Looks like and sounds like you pivoted very quickly within 48 hours. I remember having a conversation with you in the early days, what was it, March, February, right around there, right, when we first announced uh, uh, the MCO. Right? And uh, we were talking about how we can move things quicker. You know, we've had uh, we've had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, different contact centers, you know, having to issue letters, in, official letters, yeah, uh, moving the computers home, right? Uh, data security, you know, getting data. Well, we were talking about so many changes, yeah. And uh, I think you all did very well in terms of being able to move everything within 48 hours. My goodness, yeah, that's amazing. All right. uh, so that must have been pretty challenging, yeah, okay. So Aishan, on the operational side, was that pretty challenging for you also? Uh, basically, uh, there, there are a few challenges, uh, to be honest, to setting up telemarketing. Um, most of our clients, they might thought that, you know, setting up telemarketing is really easy. You know, just get a HR, yeah. recruit a team, you know, get a hard phones and then just to make calls. But no, honestly, okay. no, but honestly. Hang, on, hang on, hang on. We'll come to that. We'll come to that, Charlie. Let's not talk about tech here. But during the transition phase, yeah, uh, you all had to do a lot of changes, right? You all had to make a lot of changes, right? Uh, we we are we are so yeah, yeah, the, okay. yeah we we are we we do have the three main challenges but honestly speaking mm. in terms of setting up the telemarketing as mm. we all know that in Malaysia there is a lot of public holidays now so we we yeah. know that uh time is really go for telemarketing in order for us to achieve the targets uh we need to make sure you know in terms of the scheduling we need to do it right you know or else um we, we always have to take into account like, there are many yeah. breaks you know work from home yeah. you know like meal breaks toilet breaks you know even though smoking <laughs> breaks off the annual leave or or like some unplanned yeah. emergency and medical <laughs> leave stuff yeah I, i'm really excited to get into that later yeah i'm going to ask about how you manage the people you know how do you do all that yeah okay so we'll get to that shortly right now but let, let's go back to jeremy first yeah jeremy so now you said that you made the changes you know you've managed to uh, explore and go offshore you know getting clients congratulations for that all right that's excellent okay so do you do you see uh, how where do you see this norm yeah this normal normal where do you see it growing how do you, do you see the growth you know uh, of uh, NVO BPO in terms of any marketing? So the way I see it, um, mm. working from home is inevitable. So as yeah. a matter of fact, we have partnered with uh, a couple of co-working spaces, such as uh, Headspace, uh, Collabs, Infinity A. So they are also one of the largest co-working space in uh, Joho. So we are using the office as a BCP. So such partnership will ease our uh, expansion plans, especially outside of uh, Clang Valley. So this is one of the way where we can reduce our uh, KMPEX as well. Instead right. of getting new officers, we partner with uh, people who provide officers. So yeah. this will also give our, a certain flexibility to our staff to be either working from home or mm. uh, uh, working from office. So I will look at this as, a, as the future trend where we have a hybrid model for the team to, to do both. So, yeah. and, and I mean, yesterday I spoke to the HR and I'm pretty proud to say that 98% of our staff have been vaccinated. So this is also one of the ways to get some of our staff and also give them confidence that, hey, you know, you've been vaccinated. Maybe perhaps let's slowly uh, uh, get some staff to be able to uh, move to office. So, and I, I see this as a, a norm. This is something that we are not able to uh, move away or get away from. Uh, okay. on a daily basis, not necessarily from a call, call center point of view for, for yeah. business, most businesses as well. Just based on what you're saying, right? It sounds like there is so much to consider, right? Uh, when you start, when you talk about setting up a telemarketing, I mean, you've been doing it for so long; it's almost a nature for you, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, hopefully uh, we can we can uh, and let me make this request, yeah. Uh, hopefully you can share this with us. Uh, can you take a few steps back, you know, and uh, talk about you know, tell tell us share a little bit about uh, if. I were an organization and I want to set up any marketing. What are some of the things I need to think about? I mean, you've already you've already identified a few things that you really need to think about: working from home, the equipment, you know, uh, the 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 vaccination rates, you know. So, yeah. from a strategy perspective and setting up perspective, what are some of the things that need to be considered you know, uh, by an organization if they want to set up any marketing or even if they want to outsource it? Yeah, sure. Um, I can also show a slide. So I prefer. Yeah, a slide sure, absolutely. That'd be great. That'd be great. Right. That will help things, uh, that make things a lot more mm -hmm. clearer. Yeah. yeah. So in a different perspective. Yeah. So I have sorry, sorry yeah, I'm moving Wow, on. looks like you came looks like you came prepared. <laughs> yeah, so this is a so-called onboarding process, be it whether it's being outsourced or your team internally. So there are five 
fundamental questions. So the, the first thing would be this, uh, instead of going to the basic of telemarketing, so maybe I can just sum it up. So telemarketing encompasses, encompasses different type of uh, subsets, which includes survey, even lead generation, appointment setting, and uh, telesales as well. So if your organization would, would want to have a, a telemarketing team for sales, so we need to know we have to hire the right people to be able to generate sales. So if you do have a, a maybe an idea that, okay, uh, we can't close the product or services over the phone, then we can set an appointment. So in order to set an appointment, we also need to have a different skill set for that personnel to be able to have a mindset of uh, a promise setting. Secondly, we will need to have the KPI in place. So this type of KPI would be very much dependent on uh, the product or services that the, the client or uh, even the organization would want to offer. And this will also uh, entails the SOP. So all of us, we have different SOP. And uh, that's the reason why uh, NWO is also ISO certified. So we, we are in compliance with the international standard to make sure that we do not run away from a certain low standard uh, to achieve a certain KPI. And the third one, so we want to also uh, work with the client and even the organization, we need to think of uh, what is the scope of work. So I, I, I believe that certain organization, they have so many products. Let's take for example, uh, even a, a, a training provider. They have so many training modules. So what should we focus on over the phone to entice the customers to be able to be attracted to your uh, product that you are, you are selling? So that is the item three. And item four, this is a very crucial part. You need to understand the budget. So sometimes uh, when clients approach us, they will expect us to sell a certain software. That software is worth, for instance, 50,000 ringgit annually per annum. But we have to uh, tell them that, okay, this type of budget is, is going to be a little bit tough. So we have to uh, kind of change the model, maybe to uh, appointment setting instead, instead of a daily sales, selling stuff over the phone. So there must be a certain expectation met uh, to be in line with budget. Uh, often or not, uh, this is the truth. Uh, client coming to us, comparing us with social media. They say, hey, Jeremy, I have... Uh, 1,000 ringgit, if I use 1,000 ringgit to use on Facebook ads, I believe I can get more than paying you 1,000 ringgit for a result. But not forgetting, I always compare this. If you have a billboard, I'm sure the billboard price is about easily 50,000, 100,000. So there are a lot of cars that pass by every day looking at billboard. But can you turn it, can you convert these people who, on the roadside after paying 50,000, 100,000? So the answer is, I, I don't know, most likely you can't. However, over the phone, you know, we can immediately try to close, close the sales. We can talk to the customer. We can uh, try to answer their pain point. So it goes back to the last step, the final step. Uh, we will, uh, I mean, as NO, uh, the, the, our team, we commit to be truthful and transparent. So clients coming to us, if they give us sky high KPI, or if they say, Jeremy, I expect you to sell uh, this uh, a cell phone. Uh, let's say I'm expecting to sell iPhone, iPhone 12 over the over the over the line. So we will say, okay, it's close to impossible. I wouldn't say it's impossible. It's close to impossible. Then maybe we look at a different model. Perhaps let set an appointment to meet up with the person and have even a Zoom session to try to tell them the benefit of this iPhone before we sell over the uh, over a Zoom call. So these are the five steps uh, that we usually use when we, uh, be it outsourced or be it uh, in-house, when the organization wants to embark into uh, telemarketing. Thank, thanks for that. I think essentially the key would be really to identify what is it, what kind of end result you want, right? Okay, what, uh, what kind of closure or how, how would you see the transaction closing on the phone right? if it's possible at all? You know, and uh, that's the first consideration. Uh, and then we look at the budgets and what's available, what do you want to get, you know, what kind of targets are you looking at? Uh, and most importantly, the subsets, right? The subsets, yeah. Don't limit yourself to just thinking that to sell, to sell, to sell, to sell, right? It could be the pre-sales that's involved. It could be the introduction. It could be the marketing. Right? But it could be a lot of other ways uh, to use outbound telemarketing and not just to sell, for example, right? Okay, of course, 
uh, like as like you mentioned, uh, right, the most powerful of all is uh, my my Facebook ad is not going to be able to my, close the customer per se, right? But if I have somebody to talk to or somebody is talking to me, chances of me closing will be higher. That's absolutely true. That's very good. All right now, uh, let, let me take a little shift here, okay, to the people side, the human side, you know. Okay, so Aisha, if you can share with us, when you set up or when you run a telemarketing in front of the people, okay, so what are some of the considerations uh, that a person would need to get, yeah, would need to have? Uh, what kind of considerations do I need to make? What kind of things do I need to look at you know, to make sure I have a good, solid telemarketing team? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely the main thing will be like meeting the sales target based on client's budget, like, like what Jeremy just mentioned. Uh, it's another challenge, you know. So in order for us to like meet the customer's needs, you know, to retain a sufficient workers to meet the sales number and to control the cost at the same time and to continuously motivate the team and uh, turnover rate issues is always one of the factors, I would say, setting up a telemarketing, you know. we got to spend time on training new member over again and over again, you know. So training time definitely will be part of the costing, I would say, you know. So we have to implant the mindset that, you know, how can we maximize the client's budget? Uh, how can Envo's team meet the increasing demands of customers? Or even the KPI that budget given, at the same time, we've got to enhance the satisfactions of the customers, you know? So, and also we need to manage the team and continue to motivate them, you know? We really need a high EQ, you know? So yeah. we need to be alert, you know, to observing the telemarketer mood daily because their emotional will be reflected over the phone calls uh, when speaking to customers, which will impact the reputation of the branding presented. Uh, right? Yeah, if, you don't mind, if you don't mind me interrupting very quickly, you mentioned uh, assessing the individual to see whether they have good EQ or not. So what are some of the things that you look for in an individual uh, to be a good telemarketer? What do you think they need? Uh, de definitely, I would say that we have, because they have their own characteristics, I would say, uh, we need to be reasonable. We need to be rational. So we need to ensure that um, uh, all the business uh, procedures, you know, need to be recorded from time to time, you know, just to avoid uh, if any dispute, you know. So, so from the recorded thingy, you know, we can actually retrieve out, you mm. know, we can actually mm. make sure that our telemarketer doing the right things, you know. And because can you imagine that telemarketers need to do 100 outbound calls every day, you know? So in a short period of time, you know, everyone could be very emotional, especially when they're handling complaints, when they're handling uh, sales rejections. So I would say that the key players in the call center telemarketer is always team leader and supervisor. You know, we got to hire a right team leader in place. Uh, team leader need to be alert, you know, where, where we need to yeah, give a yeah. very constant encouragement, I would say. So yeah, we need to choose yeah. a right supervisor. We need to choose the right team leader. Uh, we often choose the extroverted ones that I would say dare to fight the personality, you know, at the same time, we need to cultivate them to become a very strong leader. Yeah, so yeah, all these yeah. factors have to be put in the thinking cap, you know, before we set out a telemarketing, especially in people management. Yep. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. okay, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay, all right, good. Now, uh, before we move to the next set of questions, uh, Jeremy, what do you think? Should we give out the first voucher? Yes, why not? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. All so right, it, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first voucher. Uh, and it is a 100 ringgit voucher. Okay. Uh, from, I'm sorry, uh, uh, since it's a contribution from Envo. Okay. Uh, what, what voucher is this, uh, uh, Jeremy? You want to share a little bit? We are op open to ah. grab or touch and go. Whoever wow, wow, touch wow. And go, okay. <laughs> well, Kamala says wow already. <laughs> okay, uh, but quick question, quick question. Uh, Kamala, since you've uh, answered on chat, okay, uh, can you share what is your favorite number, Kamala? Right? Favorite number or lucky number? I don't believe number in luck, five. so I say favorite. Number five. number five. All right. Please type down, type down five, type down five. Type five. Yeah, type five. Thank you very much. Wait, wait, wait. Upper five. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, everybody type five. Hello, that's not the that's not how we select. Okay, <laughs> how we are going to select? Yeah, okay. Uh, is uh, I'll share with you later. All right, we're gonna request for you to type something into the chat. All right, type something into the chat. Not yet, not yet. I know. Yeah, you, you, you. Thank you, thank you. All right. Um, what I want to do is uh, I want you to type down. Okay, think of remember this. Huh? Okay, uh, I would like the grab or. So, or I would like the grab, okay, a voucher uh, from Envo BPO to be given to me. All right, can you type that? Okay, wait, huh? 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. All right. Whoever wants the voucher, whoever wants the voucher, all right, okay, uh, of 100 ringgit, okay, the first one, either a grab or a touch and go voucher of 100 ringgit, okay, the fifth person to type I want, the fifth person to type I want will get it. Wow, <laughs> they actually typed the whole thing. <laughs> okay, wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, okay, look at that. Brilliant, brilliant, all right? Okay, okay, let's see. Uh, I will count from where after I put in, uh, I after I put in the, where did I write this? Okay, after I wrote voucher RM100, yeah, okay, I type in our voucher RM100. So, uh, Sida, you are number one. Tim Low, you are number two. Uh, HR manager, actually by default, uh, you're disqualified uh, because we don't know who you are. You're HR manager only. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, you are number three. Okay, and uh, number four is Yvonne Chin. And number five, voila, it's Viola. <laughs> okay, uh, Viola, congratulations. Yeah, okay. Uh, please message, please message. Uh, uh, one, our team will come, somebody will message you and we will get some information from you. All right. Okay. So one of the Edson team, Edson team, uh, please, uh, please message Viola, get some information from her, right? So we can get the first voucher out. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Big round of applause. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Thank you, Envo BPO, for the first voucher. Now, let's get back to business. Okay. Now, we already talked about the setting up, uh, the, the strategy of things. Yeah. All right. And how uh, it can be advantageous to us. All right. It can be advantageous to us. Now, there are. Uh, other questions and in terms of the subsets, you know, of the different things that we can do, the different services that we can do. Now, my question is this, yeah, my question is this. Uh, what are the, when you talk about outsourcing, right? outsourcing, you talked about outsourcing a lot, you work with a lot of different clients, okay? Uh, In-house is definitely one consideration, but as to outsource my telemarketing, you've really got to convince me, lah, why outsource to you when I can do it myself? Okay, so uh, that's where I think I would like to position this question. All right, so share with us why you feel or what are the advantages and perhaps maybe even the disadvantages of outsourcing my telemarketing operations. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I also prepared a couple of slides which I can I can share as well. Well, uh, you look sounds like you prepared slides for all my questions. <laughs> By the way, you missed a few. Just now you skipped a few slides. I don't know what info must have been pretty juicy information in. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay, come, let's pull the... So this for the onboarding. So I, I did prepare you know, on the advantages for everyone to see. Oh, okay. That'd be great. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so sorry for this. Yeah. So I, I think it's good for everyone to understand uh, the crux of telemarketing, which encompasses telesales, upsells, lead generation, customer survey, and appointment setting. So this is the, the basic of uh, the telemarketing. Okay, let me go straight to the advantages. Okay, uh, I, I need to digress a little bit. So why, why so? Because uh, a lot of time, I understand based on the poll, many of us uh, have not even uh, bothered considering telemarketing. But you'll be very surprised on how telemarketing, telemarketing can give you good results. So why is it still relevant? As you can see, just a quick stats. Uh, I'll run through this within one minute. So for 60% you know, of the uh, survey shows that they agree telemarketing is still effective. Even Fortune 500 companies are using telemarketing as one of the uh, sales, sales uh, model. And also 50% of companies need to verify their leads. So they do this via telemarketing. And also 61% of companies, they lack of resources for successful lead generation. And this is also something which you can consider maybe to outsource as well. And lastly, this interesting step. 43% no, that increase in efficiency if this leads generation are down by an outsource provider. So as you say, stats don't really lie. So uh, that's why I want to run through these stats with you. And it goes back to the next question, okay? As to the advantages of telemarketing, let's go through this uh, clean and simple. So these are the five core reasons why a client usually outsource to us. So the advantage would be, of course, in terms of expertise. So since most of, uh, most of us will know that we, this is our core services, so that's the reason why we have our in-house team, in-house trainer, in-house uh, managers, who's able to give you the quality in your telemarketing, okay, with the years of experience. And of course, it saves time. So instead of your team doing all the telemarketing, why don't you do 
more uh, efficient method, such as doing R&D on your products or services. So this will definitely save time to allow us filter all your database on your behalf. And of course, scalability is there. So we have clients coming to us, you know, saying that, okay, uh, how if I only have uh, this amount number of leads? So we say, no problem. Let's scale it together. Uh, we can touch maybe uh, start with 2,000 database and then we grow up to 10, 20,000. So that is the reason why people outsource. And of course, we are able to reach out to more customer using our uh, in-house CRM uh, system. And lastly, instead of your team setting up your own uh, infrastructure, your IT infrastructure, training your own staff, give all the headache or leave all the headache to us so that these are one of the, uh, the advantages of uh, outsourcing of telemarketing. So of course, to every good thing, there's also a not so good thing. So it goes to my second slide. These advantages of outsourced telemarketing. So these are the three main reasons why clients are usually skeptical. They will come to me and say, hey, Jeremy, um, you know, if I would have to outsource to you, so I'm afraid the first thing, I'll be lack of control. We're not able to keep tabs of our performance of uh, your team. So fret not, most of the time we will overcome this by having a very close interaction with a client. As a matter of fact, we have a constant WhatsApp group and even a Telegram, all sorts of a, a, a ways of how we communicate with clients on a live basis on the sales number. Then uh, next thing would be on cultural differences. So I, I know there are certain uh, institution or maybe the, the MNCs, they will say, no, we have this MNC mindset and now we want to outsource to you. Will there be any differences in culture? So these are usually the uh, skepticism, okay? But we overcome this by working closely with client to make sure that we have similar benefits. I wouldn't say 100% the same, but we will have benefits. As a matter of fact, sometimes our benefit might be better. We will give uh, additional rewards as well. And lastly, conflict of interest. So this is also usually the, the main thing when uh, clients outsource, they will say, um, okay, uh, and more. so let's say if we outsource to you, what will happen to my team? My, my team will be run, running out of job. So then I will say, okay, uh, no, fret not. We will complement or work together with your team. So I give you an example. Uh, may, maybe if you're okay, I can share even a case study. Uh, do we have time to share a case study, uh, Ken? Okay, let's go to... I'll show you some case study where... Uh... Yeah, I would love to do that. Yeah, That's exactly yeah. where I'm going with this yeah, question. You know, So um, sure. I would like to hear some numbers, you know, and say, you know, because you were talking about what you can do for the client. Yeah. Right now. I'd love to hear what you have done before with clients. Okay, okay. Yeah, this slide is our three core values. Let me go to case study straight. Okay, so these are a few case study A, B, and C. So be it uh, different sizes of client, but we take this uh, on a sample basis. So one of our clients is one of the largest insurance companies in Asia. So they do have a certain number of leads and their management has been pushing a lot you know, in terms of the KPI to say, can you hit this KPI to generate revenue for us? So when they approach us, they, they were saying that I have my own team. So can you also uh, set up, can we also outsource uh, the team to you? So we will then, instead of compete with the team, we complement them. So we work hand in hand to increase the competitiveness. As you can see over here, the case study. Um, came, sorry, sorry, can I interrupt? When you sure. say complement them, can you go into a little bit more specific as to what kind of complementary services did you provide them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, let's take example, the insurance company. As you know, insurance, there's a life insurance, there's general insurance, there's so many types of insurance. Correct. So imagine that uh, the, the client, they have close to 50,000 or 100,000 database, but they're not able to call all. So there's two ways of complementing. So the first one would be uh, giving a certain number of database to the, the, the internal team, the in-house team to do the calling to cross-sell a certain product. So let's say it's a product A, and then they will give us the same number of leads to us to sell product B. So we are selling two different products, but at the same time, we will maintain the competitiveness to make sure that we are able to hit a certain KPI. So we will, we will then uh, uh, tell to the client, 
since your uh, you are selling this A, we are selling this B. But sometimes client will also want us to sell the same product as their in-house team. So complement will be in a way where this uh, list that we have, we will we will make sure that we we get uh, the best KPI out of this list. So okay. uh, to a okay. certain extent, it's also some competitiveness inside. Okay. So in addition to just bringing in the numbers, right? So you align yourself to the client's KPIs also you know, to make sure that all of the internal targets are met. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So you brought in 3,840 sales. Huh? Wow. That's a large number yeah. of sales. <laughs> now may I ask what period, what period is this? Huh? Uh, so this is usually a one year. The case study over here is uh, usually uh, on an annual basis. And as you can see, even the sales number might be not as not as high, but we're looking at the volume, the ticket size. So if you look at case study B, like financial institution, so uh, with the, the number of revenue, as in the amount which is close to 10.8 million that we brought in, this is based on this number of sales that we generated. Okay, so if we would have to move away from these big companies, I'll give you case study C. So this one, a case study C, where the, the company, which is based in Europe, who wanted to expand uh, to Malaysia. So this is a very clear example also of how telemarketing can complement social media or digital marketing. Okay, how, how we did it is this. So the client do not really have knowledge on how uh, Malaysian, how the Malaysian culture, how the Singapore culture, or even Indonesian culture. So when they outsource to us, they say, okay, uh, Enwo or Jeremy, I want to solve the headache. We just give you a certain project fee where uh, you just help us to hit our KPI and you know the culture well in these three, three countries, namely Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. So that is where we came in. They will do the, uh, the digital marketing. The products will then be shown in Instagram, in Facebook, in different types of social media. And the leads uh, for interested uh, parties, let's say you're interested in a certain product, you click on the Instagram, that particular database will flow to my team who will then try to upsell and close the sales on the client behalf. Wow, so, so they actually open up their database to give access to your team so they can get the leads. Yep, you are right. Wow, yes. brilliant, brilliant. So this is a very clear example of uh, over this pandemic, how we have evolved. You no, know, instead of just pure calling, 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 we work with uh, a this type of client who only have one pain point. Uh, they want to expand in Malaysia to increase their sales, but they do not know how. So that is where we came in. Yeah. Wow, okay, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it's really a subset. You really have to look at the subsets and what are some of the areas uh, that we can do instead of just looking at closing the sale. Yeah? I, I think it's a wonderful example. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's very enlightening. All right, uh, folks, anybody has any questions, go ahead and type into chat. Yeah? All right. Now, uh, but having said that, having said that, okay, let me pivot this a little bit. Now, pivot seems to be the keyword nowadays. Right? Okay, let me pivot this a little bit to more of the people side. Uh, on the people side. So when we talk about uh, outsourcing, yeah, okay, there are the challenges. So, uh, Aishan, from your experience, right? I mean, you've worked in in-house uh, out telemarketing before, right? Uh, then you worked at the outsourcing marketing before, right? So now you're in outsource. So tell us, yeah, what are some of the headaches that in-house telemarketers or telemarketing team management will face, right? Uh, that you can remove from uh, the client. Share uh, <laughs> what are some of the issues that they are potentially they can face, right? And uh, how can uh, how can outsourcing to uh, you guys okay uh, help them elevate or remove that those problems? Go ahead. Uh, I will say that in in house and outsource people management issues still the mm. same thing, still the same mm. thing. You know, mm. it just the the just between like if you ask me, it's just between a client and a vendor uh, uh, characteristics lah, You know, but in terms of setting up the whole team, you know, in terms of the telemarketer, we are still doing the same thing. You know, uh, like example before we get them on calls, we we are still setting up the same strategy as usual in in house. Uh and also outsource it, I was, mm. yeah. What challenges with the people? What challenges with the people? Because uh, I know it's the same thing, okay? But uh, really the challenges that you may face with the people, right? Are things like, you know, lack of motivation. The things like you say, getting them to come on time, right? Uh, how many calls they make, you know? So uh, what, what are some of the typical challenges uh, a normal company would face if they have their own telemarketers? Uh, 
uh, I would say that uh, the motivation issues, you know, that is the, always the main problem. Uh. So if, if you ask me in terms of uh, problematic stuff issues, right, um, they, all, they, 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 they always have, uh, to be honest, you know. So uh, because we're working in different era, different age, right. you know, in the call center, they, they are things happen like this. Uh. So if you ask me about the action plan, uh, we do have the action plans on how to motivate it. Um, mm. I, I can share with you in shortly, maybe perhaps. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, no issue, no issue. All right. Because one, when we were working, or even when I was doing telemarketing, I get tired, I get bored, you know. Uh, to try and motivate myself, sometimes it gets very tiring. So, uh, there, so it really depends. Like you mentioned, you need to have a good, strong team leader, you know, a mm. good, strong manager to be able to push and uh, help everybody move along with their targets, right? Uh, mm. one, one thing I will see, yeah, one thing I will see, I will, uh, after that, before you share with me, I will, I, let me predict whether true or not. Okay. Uh, one of the challenges that uh, an in-house would face would be if you run a telemarketing team is how do you manage the numbers? Right? Do you number? Do you manage the calls? Do you num? Do you manage uh, the revenue? Yeah. Uh, do you manage success rate? Yeah. Do you manage well, what do you? There's so many KPIs and quantums that you can manage, right? Uh, but if I outsource, I don't have to worry about all that. I just have one number that I can manage with you, correct? Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, not to mention all the funny business that the telemarketers tend to do. Uh, we hire telemarketers, uh, and uh, they are uh, they are exciting people. They are great people, but then uh, after a while, they also create a lot of problems. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Um. Oh, we have a question. Uh, Jeremy, do you see the question? Mikael. Uh, Mikael. Uh, Mabuhay, yes, Mikael. From... I believe he's from the Philippines, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm Michel assuming you're from the Philippines. So happen he has the same name as a current Arsenal manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that so happens, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, do you, you want to save this? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to save this for later or do you want to address it now? The question from Mikel Arteta is this, yeah. Uh, what is your biggest devil's advocate? That means threat or challenges in the telemarketing business. Uh, I, I can just say maybe in a very simple manner. So the, the threat is the, the belief or the conception of the customers out there. Very, very simple. I believe each and everyone here in the group, you have uh, gotten call before from real estate agent, from insurance agent. So this will some sort uh, spoil the market to a certain extent, where when you see an unknown number, immediately you have this imprint. Oh crap, someone is going to sell me certain thing. And then the moment you pick up the phone, sometimes it's true, you know, to say, uh, hey, sir, you know, you know, I understand that, you know, uh, I hope uh, you want to know, hear more about the, the service that we have or the insurance product that we have or even personal loan. So the, the, this type of uh, uh, con misconception will create some sort of like, I, I would say disadvantage to us. Uh, whenever you mention the word telemarketing, everyone will just think, oh, uh, the annoying people who have been calling me. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. Okay, thank, thanks for that. Yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't say they're annoying like, since I'm a professional in the, in the industry. Every time someone calls, right, I go through this interview process to understand how they function, what are they doing, why they work, you know, what are yeah. KPIs and things like that. Yeah? But interesting. Yeah, but absolutely true. I think uh, mindset is one of the biggest challenges. Uh, even when hiring, yeah, when the moment you say telemarketing, right, uh, they, although it's an accepted industry, uh, position or, or the job, right? A lot of people are still quite uh, resistant against it. You know? okay, right. uh, tell you what, uh, is it time for our number two giveaway of the 100 yeah. ringgit voucher? But, but Ken, before that, uh, maybe uh, also just a tips uh, for all the audience here. So uh, I, I do have friends, you know, come to me and say that, hey, uh, Jeremy, uh, you know, people have been calling me. And is this from your team? You know, how should we overcome this? So what, what we do is that uh, we usually tell the, the telemarketer, uh, please place us under do not call this the DNC. So the moment you put DNC, uh, I mean, I, I can safely say from NO side, we do have our own system to make sure that this database for under do not call, okay? We work together with the client to say that we are not supposed to touch the database anymore. So this is one of the pointers on how you can uh, overcome this uh, so-called marketing uh, mm. Scammers now, same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. Okay, uh, thank you for running a DNC list. Yeah, 
so DNC lists are for everybody, for the audience's knowledge. You know, a lot of countries uh, in the world have DNC lists, yeah? and it is a law uh, for telemarketer operators to honor this DNC list. If a customer were to request to remove me from the database, they are obligated to remove, okay, because of this legality. However, to my knowledge, I mean, you're the lawyer, Jeremy, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah? All right. However, in Malaysia, uh, there is no rule, okay? Or no hard and fast rule. And uh, I don't believe even MCMC uh, has much regulations against uh, or telemarketing, all right? Um, but what are your thoughts on that? Is, it, is there a law? In Malaysia, for yeah, you to you're, you're right. initiate so against I, mm. a, a lot of uh, actually MP are trying to get this get settled, okay, to be similar to Singapore and some other uh, yes. countries. Uh, but having said that, we are still waiting for the day you know, when this will happen. <laughs> I can tell you, bro, I've been waiting for the past 15 years. It still hasn't <laughs> appeared. <yet. laughs> so it's fantastic for the telemarketing industry. But thank you for being ethical. Yeah, I think that that goes a long way. And that goes yeah. a very long way. Yeah, okay, absolutely fantastic. Okay, come. Second giveaway, second giveaway. All right, now uh, I'll tell you the question first and then I'll tell you how we select what the selection criteria is for giveaway number two. Yeah? All right, now uh, Jeremy, Mr. Jeremy Lim mentioned some subsets. Okay, she mentioned some subsets. All right, so instead of just tele marketing, what are some of the subsets or other services that you can do instead of just sales, 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 sales? All right, now uh, type down one subset. Yeah, one subset. Okay, type down one subset. All right, and uh, we will select, we will select, since this is the year uh, 2021, right? Okay, we will select the, uh, we will select the subset that is correct, which is the 21st one, all right? Okay, everybody, what is the subset? One of the services uh, that is mentioned by uh, Jeremy, okay, under telemarketing, all right? All yours in the chat, 100 ringgit voucher number two, voucher number two. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just put this down first before you put your response in. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. 100 gate voucher number two. Now everybody's waiting. I don't want to go first. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> but nobody's stopping you from putting it again and again and again, right? Nobody said you can only put in one, sir. Right. <laughs> Come on, ladies and gentlemen. This is exciting. Question, huh? for, uh, uh, for the audience, what is part of telemarketing? Telemarketing is ah. an umbrella. Yeah, yeah. What is part of it? What falls below? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I think I just made the mistake of counting number 21st, 21st one. So, <laughs> all right. So, we have, uh, <laughs> we'll go to the 21st one and see whether it's uh, it's a real response or not. Huh? Okay, all right. Come, let's go. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, team, team, please confirm with me. Please confirm with me. Uh, I have uh, Ram, Ramia. Is it R A M Y A A? Ramia. All right, and number 21. Am I correct? Somebody count. That's a team. Please help me count. All right, wait a moment. Thank you. So it's between uh, Visha, Ramya, or Renu, Chen Chen Chen, the three of you. Maybe you can do, you know, uh, uh, maybe you can do, you know, uh, the Lat Lela Templom or something. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Give you all the price. <laughs> okay, do we have a count? Which number? Which name? Which name is number 21? So I noticed there's an answer on customer service. So just to be clear, uh, customer service is considered as inbound where we receive calls. So it's totally opposite of uh, telemarketing. Unless they are talking about marketing calls you know, when we are doing outbound service follow-ups. All right. uh, so it could be follow-ups uh, to customers who have uh, submitted or provided some kind of uh, response to us. All right. Then it's a service call. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, some of the hospitals or medical, uh, medical facilities do that. Right, like reminders, you know, for appointments and things like that. Yeah, so I think uh, that would fall under customer service also, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm. So that that's a potential service. Some of the operations, some of the uh, some of the companies that we work with, right, they do a left pocket, right pocket, or they do inter service that is service. So as an outbound, right, you are doing telemarketing. However, 
I can employ some of the services that you are suggesting internally. So I can call, let's say there's an announcement, you know, internally of a change in policy or important announcement that we need people to know. So that the, the team can actually make these calls to the staff. Right? To be sure everybody knows and is aware of the changes. Yeah. So same thing, the services that they can come to you for. Right. All right. So that's a team. Do we have number 21? Who is number 21? Um, is it Renu? Renu Devi? Okay, Renu Devi. All right. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, Ramni, we have Renu Devi, lead sourcing, lead generation. Uh, Jeremy, is that the correct answer? Yes, correct. So yes. that's one of the subset. Excellent, excellent. Okay, all right. Uh, Chloe, please get in touch with Renu. Renu, congratulations. Yeah, yep. uh, you have won a 100 ringgit voucher. All right. Okay, I just buy something for me for grab food. Lah. Okay, no problem. All right. <laughs> okay, let's come back to the topic. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Um, I think we're about to close off. Let's go ahead and close up with uh, some uh, final thoughts and some final questions. All right, now, uh, we've talked about the people side, we talked about the implementation, we talked about the strategy. Okay, now, um, let's talk about the returns. Yeah. Okay, and what kind of returns can I expect to see? Now, earlier on, we had a poll, all right, of people wanting a 10%. 30%, 50%, and some not even expecting any returns in 2022. All right. So in in parting, yeah, in parting, all right, uh, what would you tell everyone in here right, in terms of telemarketing and you know, how do you capitalize on telemarketing, uh, especially with outsource telemarketing? All right. Okay. What are your final thoughts? Okay, I can start first. Mm. So may, maybe uh, let me share uh, one of the uh, story uh, that I, I've read. This is a, a true fact uh, of Seng Heng. I think a lot of people know Seng Heng. It's one of the biggest electrical company in Correct. Malaysia. So uh, when I read the interview by the, the founder, Mr. Lee, so he was saying that this company, as in Seng Heng, they were losing 40 million every quarter. So uh, easily about close to... 100, 120 million because of the MCO, MCO, one, two, three, EMCO. So just beginning of the January 2021, which is this year, they, man they managed to pivot or uh, diversify their team. Most of them are in the retail. Uh, the sales people are in the retail or in the malls and they are not allowed to open. So what they do is instead of retrenching this staff, they converted them close to, I think 500 of them to generate sales instead. So you, you'll be surprised, huh? I do have friends who gotten called before from saying to try to upsell. So these are all valuable database. Using the existing database they have, they managed to generate, uh, if not mistaken, from January to May, 64 million worth of sale just through telemarketing. This is during million. the pandemic period? Yes, just January wow. to May 2021. So with, with this in mind, telemarketing is here to stay, especially when you're not able to meet people face to face. So that is the, the relevance of telemarketing, especially during this era. Uh, and always remember this, we need to think telemarketing from an angle where this will complement your digital marketing services. Okay, we, we cannot take, okay, uh, I spent 1,000 on digital marketing and immediately I, uh, I expect the same result, you no, know, with 1,000 uh, doing just telemarketing without digital marketing. So the best way is to have a hybrid model, digital, social media, plus with telemarketing. With three, with three of these, uh, I would say, settings in mind, you can see the result that have returned for some of our clients, including the client that we have in Europe. Okay, the, the very same model which we can use. So that's why I always have an objective mind when you want to undertake any uh, non-core non business service. So you can outsource you know, to, to companies like us uh, instead of doing on your own. So you'll be surprised how this outsourcing will benefit uh, your organization. So definitely we'll be able to increase our sales. So in terms of number, whether five times, 10 times, 100 times, you know, that, that is very subjective depending on the products or services. But having said that, with uh, the, the team of the professionals that we have, so do not be reluctant you know, in trying to reach out to us to see whether if outsourcing work best for you. Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, if one thing that we will close off with later on is uh, if anybody wants to contact you, you know, we'll get some contact information from you. Yeah, maybe you can... Uh, uh, the uh, the Envo team, yeah, whoever's here, can maybe put some uh, in contact info right, uh, in, into the chat. Uh, later. Yeah, okay, maybe can everybody can contact you for that. 
right, for additional services, uh, in which you can always call access. You know, we will be connecting. All right, uh, I can. Uh, any final words on your part in terms of running operations yeah, uh, for telemarketing? Uh, golden nuggets. Okay, these are ICHEN's, uh, ICHEN's uh, must do practices. Uh, what are they? Yeah, definitely. I would say that uh, in terms of people perspective, right? Uh, uh, the, the, the management requires really a responsive, you know, innovative team, you know, because everyone we need to contribute new ideas, you know, we need to constantly accept new changes, you know, new right. challenges. We cannot blindly follow script, like I would say. So we need to keep improvise, you know. Uh, although there are a lot of demands and pressures, you know, from the customers or even like superiors or even though our clients. But we have to make sure we respond very quickly. We need to keep changing constantly uh, without being discouraged and lose confidence, I would say. So mm. we need to make sure that, uh, like what I mentioned, we always remember if something doesn't kill you, it will only make you stronger. That's, that's the main thing. Yeah, especially mm. in telemarketing. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the, the need to constantly be changing and moving, I think that's one of the challenges in terms of serving your clients, right? Okay, you keep abreast of what is the latest practice, what is the newest thing to do, right? uh, how best to give benefit to the clients. Yeah? And so, looks like your job is cut out, man. It's uh, quite, a, quite a responsibility yeah, to be able to do that for the clients. Yeah? Okay, excellent, excellent. All right. Uh, uh, shall we go back to uh, this uh, Arsenal footballer? Yeah, congratulations. Um, <laughs> so, Mikhail, Mikhail Arteta. All right. Uh, so, he has a question here. Yeah, Jeremy, did you see the question? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. This is so a I think, question. Yeah, Sorry. very in line with very in line with what uh, what Aishan was saying that you needed to keep yourself on your toes. You know what's in the future, what's in the horizon. Yeah. Um, so maybe some uh, final thoughts about what do you see? Where do you see it going? You're yeah, very specific. Twenty thirty. I don't know why twenty thirty, but uh, I guess it's a good number to begin with. Yeah. Um, telemarketing will still be relevant, contrary to a lot of people saying that it's a sunset business. So uh, that, that's a reason why I, I, I mentioned we have to be smart in trying to have a hybrid model, uh, telemarketing together with digital marketing, together with um, social media marketing. So these three, you know, when you uh, have, get it together, you have these three services being, being used, definitely you will achieve pretty good results, okay? Results that you will not think that you will be achieving. So in terms of, yes, technology, definitely in the, maybe by 2020, we will do have some AI uh, uh, imposed in terms of telemarketing. Even as we speak, we already have uh, 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 this service called a voice blast service, where we have uh, this particular call being recorded and we blast it randomly to, to people out there. One of the examples, some of you might receive, if not mistaken, Astro, Astro or Maxis, they, they use this before, where they contact you and remind you of your billing. Like they say, hey, uh, Ken, this is a reminder that you have an outstanding bill of so and so, X and X. Please pay before then. So, this is one of the simple telemarketing uh, uh, technology that is being used by a lot of organizations now. So, and as we move further, with a more uh, advanced technology such as AI, then maybe perhaps you can change the script accordingly. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think you were, what you're saying is right. It's absolutely true. Yeah, in terms of the bill reminders, there are predictive dialers who have a built-in automation bot right now where you can record messages uh, where they can call yeah, and the, the predictive dialer will do all the work. However, uh, that is only the first touch and nobody likes talking to a bot. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's where a human... Uh, place makes the big difference between uh, the person becoming a prospect or or not, you know, or by becoming a customer or not, or for you achieving the results or not. You know? okay, we see a lot of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you mentioned a few of the clients, uh, of our clients also, who are moving towards uh, other options. Yeah? Okay. Uh, right now, we are training Envo BPO's team okay, uh, in uh, one of our certified programs, which is called Certified Contacts and the Digital Agent. Right, where we teach them how to communicate and even close sales okay, via messaging, yeah, via emails, via, via, via live chat. All right, uh, how do you best word? How do you get that closure? Okay, so uh, that's a good thing that we're doing. Yeah? Right, so this is part of the Punjana Precaso. Yeah? So uh, anybody out there, if you're interested, all right, uh, this training is at no touch. It is subsidized uh, by the government yeah, for, because of the 
right, for the Punjana, uh, part of the Punjana program, right? So it is paid for, you know, paid for. So do contact us if you're interested, we'll do that, right? Uh, we already have uh, the first batch in from Envo. We're looking for the waiting for the session and the batch to run, right? And then we'll have everybody trained for other means of contact, right? aside from voice. All right. Okay. So uh, that pretty much uh, wraps up uh, the questions. I don't see any other questions. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? All right. And uh, I can just, uh, we can allow you to just unmute yourself right? and then you can ask the question. Anyone? Does anybody have any questions? Any questions from the audience? Wow, look, it looks like uh, Jeremy, you did a great job and nobody has yeah. any questions. <laughs> yeah, maybe why why don't I share a slide, the, the final slide? You no, know, I'm sure this these are the questions that will, will be in most people's mind. I think that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Huh? Okay. So it goes back to proof, uh, prove me right now uh, that you are over prepared. You're prepared more for uh, before I even ask you the questions. <laughs> yeah. So this these are definitely some of the questions that people will ask. Okay, mm. first, sales costs are taking too much of my time, especially those organizations uh, who have you know, so, so many things to do on a daily basis. So that is why uh, outsource is one of the best model. So you do what you do best and then you outsource the rest. So that is usually the, the, the worst that I use. So I, of course, I'm not confident enough to speak on the phone. So you see, speaking on the phone is not as straightforward as most people would think so. So that's why outsource is one of the best model. So, and also it's hard to keep up and manage the volume of calls. Imagine that uh, we, we get an ordinary Joe on the road. We say, hey, can you pick up the phone and call 100 numbers per day? Mm. So me, maybe that person would say, okay, let me try, but it's not that easy to hit 100. No, so, uh, even no. personally myself, I've done it before and it's not, not easy at all. No. So it takes experience and constant training. And of course, Training a telemarketer is taking too much of time. So I believe that you might have this question before. So yeah, these are some of the questions that uh, are prepared. And uh, that's why, you know, in terms of the organizations, you know, who have not tried uh, telemarketing or be even you know, outsourcing. Yeah, do, don't be afraid to try out. You'll be, yeah. you'll be surprised, you know, the outcome. Mm -hmm. I think absolutely very spot on yeah? uh, in the current times and the current situation, uh, we have to explore all other ways you know, to generate revenue. Right? For those who are looking to increase your revenue you know, by more than 50%, right? like it, it, you really need to break out of the, out of the mold and do something different. Uh, telemarketing time and time again has shown its, uh, shown its pro prowess in terms of providing the revenue for you. Right? So uh, that's definitely worth the shot. Yeah, okay. Uh, looks like we have a question on rates. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mr. Um, let's see, we have Mr. Guan Han. Tan Guan Han, is it? Okay. Uh, so, Guan Han, uh, the, what we will do is uh, I would really prefer not to talk about rates here, okay, because it really depends on the package and what, uh, what you want. All right. But uh, I don't know, Jeremy, uh, do you want to see if we can help uh, Mr. Tan here? Yeah, a lot of our rates, uh, we don't have like, uh, like for example, you, when you sell products, okay, Apple, you straight away know, uh, Washington Apple will cost how, how much, you know, a certain Apple from uh, different countries. Uh, because our services is done in a very customized model on a very, like what I, I, I mentioned just now on the five steps. So we need to be transparent, first of all, uh, whether if any marketing suits you. So I do not want to oversell because we are looking at a long-term partnership. So I, I do not want to take on the project for the sake of taking it for just two weeks, but we want to look in the long run, six months, one year, five years. So uh, I think it's good that we take this offline where uh, my team, you know, or you myself, I can reach out to you. We can discuss on this to, to see whether, first of all, if telemarketing is suitable for your industry. Absolutely. Let me not yeah. Okay. Thanks about that, Jeremy. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that, I'm sorry, Mr. Tan. Yeah. This uh, actually a basic. This is a very question because there are so many charging models also. The different ways of charging. It depends which one you're most comfortable with. Right? It could be poly per contact. It could be charging by per head. Right. It could be per success. Yeah. So different. 
uh, different conclusions or different outcomes. Yeah, uh, would have a different costing model to it, right? So the the outsourcing business, uh, I tell you, it's not easy. Uh, to be coming up with costing also uh, is a headache, major headache. Right. So thanks for the question, Mister Tan. Okay, excellent, excellent. All right, okay. Uh, any other questions from anybody else? Yeah, if there are no more questions, uh, we are going to close off the session. All right, now uh, we are a little bit ahead of time actually. All right, so it'd be good if anybody has any other questions. Anyone? Okay. Yeah, if nobody has a question, I have one final question to just close off. Yeah, okay, for this one. And so, Jeremy, we talked about the strategy of setting up. Uh, you've talked about the service, you know, and why it's important and why we should go, why we should go with it. All right. Uh, Aishan has shared about operations, people, and the challenges of managing the people, hiring the people. All right. Uh, you've talked about uh, coming back in to talk about uh, the the way you should really run your operations. What are the benefits uh, to outsourcing? Now. Realistically, or not realistically, not, yeah, in the current environment, okay, um, what do you see are main services that will be able to help yeah, uh, most of the businesses today? Or what do you think are things that you can help them out with? Um, okay, if I understand your question correctly, is this pertaining to uh, helping clients to grow their revenue? Correct, absolutely correct. So uh, to, to sum it up, telemarketing is definitely one of the models, especially for those who have not tried out telemarketing. Uh, immediately, you should try out because you, you will, you'll be re really taken aback by the results that you can get. And of course, not to neglect the, the usual Facebook social media marketing. So this, these two will complement each other. Uh, and we can always you know, discuss further uh, offline if you do not know how is the process or even the SOP to get this sorted, uh, reach out to us. We'll be here ever ready you know, to assist your queries. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay, thank you for that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've reached the close of our webinar. All right, okay, and I'd just like to summarize you know, the entire webinar. There's so many things have been talked about in terms of the telemarketing. Bottom line is, uh, give it a shot, it will definitely help you. All right. Uh, so you need to decide whether you want to do it internally in house or do you want to do it uh, with an outsourcer? Okay. And of course, with an outsourcer, you have professional advice. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to reach out and just speak to uh, people like Envo, right? And uh, just give them a call to just tell them what's on your mind, right? And uh, they will have they will have individuals to be able to assist you. Right. Uh, and Jeremy, yeah, uh, is a very humble man. He will come and talk to you himself, right? <laughs> be able to share with you what are some of the ideas. What I I do like about working with Envo, and Envo has always been. Uh, a close partner of ours, right, is uh, the honesty and the, the straightforwardness of how they handle and conduct their business. And so it's a very straightforward, like, uh, like what's been mentioned. Uh, it's taken me aback sometimes where they say, we want long term. If you're just here for a short term, we would rather not do the business. I'm like, wow. <laughs> oh, yo, that's it. All right, so I'm thinking, yeah, but actually in the long term, why invest all the time if you don't have something authentic to work with? Right? Don't let that intimidate you. But, uh, the key is to find uh, the right leverage or the right foothold to work together in the partnership you know, with a good partner. Right? Because uh, from my knowledge, the uh, Envo team did not mention it, right? they have clients uh, who have been with them yeah, for multiple years, yeah, for multiple years, and it's continuous, it's continuous projects. Right, okay, and uh, that is something that we want to look forward to. Okay? So uh, with that said, with that said, all right, uh, we want to really close off. Actually, anything uh, from uh, Jeremy and Aishan, anything else you want to add before we close off here? No, I'm, I want to thank everyone, each and every one of you here, you know, for uh, enjoying with us on this beautiful evening. <laughs> Hopefully, at least you can take a thing, take away a thing or two uh, for you to, for those organizations who have not tried telemarketing, 